we are, we, and I think about some of what we talked about yesterday with you all, and you know, just the lowest place on planet Earth. Um, so what should you remember? I mean, what is it you should take home about the Dead Sea? Well, I want to give you two things that just stick with me, and if they stick with you, praise God, and if anything else, God gives you great. But the first I want you to think about is Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, I, I think about it in one sense, what you're looking at, I have a sense that in one sense it's meant to be a marker for the world. See, we, it says it this way in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, for God, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who would afterward live ungodly. Jude 7 says the same. It says, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having been given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. In one sense, we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, we think about where it is, and, the, and Sodom and Gomorrah were in this region. I mean, maybe back on the other side, I think, is where they're, you've all right, on, on the Jordan, on the south side down there. You know, and, and we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, and sometimes we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, we just think about sexual immorality and homosexuality, which is true, which is true where they were, but Ezekiel tells us something more. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49, it says, look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, abundance of idleness, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty, committed an abomination before me, therefore I took them away. I mean, once sense, it was immorality, but what God lets us know, it was deeper than that. It was a, an intense selfishness. It was an intense, you know, pride and, and, and just lack of care for others that led them, you know, to this place where they are set forth as this example of destruction. It's an interesting thing, but Sodom must have been beautiful. You might remember there in Genesis that Abraham and Lot are over here and they're journeying through the land and God moves them to separate, kind of causes it so that he and Lot would separate. And Abraham tells Lot, hey, choose, where do you want to go? And Abraham chooses Sodom because he says it was as the Garden of Eden. Lot. I'm oh, sorry, Lot. Uh, Lot chooses the, the, the Sodom because he says it was as, as, as you know the Garden of Eden. Now I'm just telling you, you can look over there at the Dead Sea, and I'm just telling you, that's not the Garden of Eden. So something happened, and, and I like to just think, you know, I wonder what God, you know, when the fire fell from heaven, I wonder what else happened. I mean, I wonder if God literally fundamentally changed the structure down here so that this would be the lowest place on planet Earth, so that it would be dead. We know it as the Dead Sea, nothing living, and, and God says there, and Peter and in Jude, this is an example to us that we should look at and say, I don't want to go there. This is what happens to that which, you know, goes against him. And so the Dead Sea stands in one sense as this marker. I mean, you have, you have hoping it's in your mind and you look and think, so this was the garden, like the Garden of Eden so long. Wow. It changed. It changed radically. The other thought, and I'll just give it to you quickly, thought number two, is kind of related to that. But, you know, we think about what you were telling us yesterday, that what makes the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea, in one sense, is it has no outlet. I mean, it's the lowest place on planet Earth. So water flows in, and it never goes out. It just stays here. It stays here to evaporate. That's what it does. And, you know, I think about it that, you know, you were up in Galilee just yesterday, and getting to see just the beauty of that. We left the Sea of Galilee. We traveled along the Jordan River. The same Jordan River that flows into the Sea of Galilee does eventually flow down here. But it's totally different. I mean, it's totally different than the Sea of Galilee. And so, I mean, one of the reasons is to, to make an overly simplistic picture, and I recognize it's simplistic, the Sea of Galilee has an inlet and an outlet. It brings the Jordan River in, and it takes it out. There's a danger in our lives that, in one sense, when you think about the, sea of, the, the Dead Sea, that where lives become like that, I mean, again, I want to take you back to what God said about Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened is they were prideful and selfish and self-centered and not caring about other people that led to their abomination. In one sense, the Dead Sea is like a picture of that. It's a person that just takes and takes and takes and takes and takes, never giving, 
and that eventually produces death. I mean, that in one sense, when you're looking at the Dead Sea, I want to tell you, I think there are dead souls that they, they are those who just live to take and take and take and take and take, never giving, never figuring out that God has called us to love Him, yes, number one. And love people. It's the second, the second part of it. The great commandment: to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And in one sense, you know, you're just you get to see it. I mean, for me, the dead set, the dead sea is kind of a place of. Well, I don't want to make it sound too weird, but it's a place of the living dead. It's kind of like you know, for anybody that's going to stick with the zombie movie. I don't know. There it is. It's dead. I mean, this is death. This is this is what it is. And nothing comes in. Nothing goes out. And it reminds us of that. And in one sense, I just want you to kind of remember that that this is a place. Of, this is a place of death. And, and, and death really is defined in many ways by those things where we become so incredibly just self-centered and we're taking and taking and taking, not giving. That we become those who. I mean, that's really. I mean, there's such a connection in there because that's what law even shows. When he chose this place, it was self-centered. And God's inviting us to be in a place that, in a world that is struggling with death, that you don't become somebody that just lives off of everybody else, that just takes and takes and takes and takes, and doesn't give, doesn't do that. God hasn't designed us for it. He's designed us to be a people that are involved in our world. He's given us talents. He's given us spiritual gifts as believers that we're meant to invest into other people, and yet the sad reality is there are believers who take and take and take and take and never serve, never do anything for Christ. And I just want to tell you, you get the example of death. That's what happens there beside you. So, a couple of quick thoughts. When you think about the Dead Sea, that I, at least in my mind, they're just, sometimes a picture's worth a thousand words. You know, you just can sit there and go, yeah, that's what it looks like. Questions or thoughts? pray for us. Got to think about kind of our theme today, just living and dealing with death and that you're a God who delivers us from death. I thank you that you do. And we, we're, we're living, we're driving by the Dead Sea and, and certainly Lord you have set it forth an as an example for us. In one sense an example of Sodom and Gomorrah and realizing just the destruction that will reign on sin. In one sense, just thinking even more, just the, the picture of just taking but not giving. And Lord, that is death. That, that's just a, that's a living death to take and not give. God, I pray that you would teach us. And even here, you, you would do what you said. I, I hold that verse before you that we've kind of just walked our way through a number of times today there in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. That you tell us that you're the God who has delivered us from death, that does deliver us from death, and will deliver us. You delivered us from so great a death. And then, Lord, I thank you that you're one that rescues us from being dead. God, would you help it to be true, just where we are, that we are people that are living and giving and taking in what you give us, but that we're looking for opportunities to be a blessing in our world. And, and God, I would even ask in a very practical way, that we would be a blessing to somebody and some people here in Israel. That we would not just take and take and take. We would not just be receiving, but we'd be blessing. Where that's encouraging, where that's praying, where we're using our lives to impact other people. I ask that you teach us not to be dead. Rescue us from death, Lord. I ask for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen.